Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, today we're going to have a debate between Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2 and his opponent in that race, Douglas County Commissioner Danny Tarkanian. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with the debate after this. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker. Entertainment here at the Carson Valley Inn is extraordinary. Yeah, super proud of the TJ's Corral, our outdoor venue, about 1,500 seats. We've had first class entertainment out there. We've had Merle Haggard, we've had Chris Young, we've had Lee Bryce a couple times, we've had Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're real proud out there, and it's, and it's just a great time. Watch CarsonValleyInn.com and grab those tickets early. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Do you play golf? The Optimist Club of Reno is hosting the inaugural Ray Pezzanella Memorial Charity Golf Tournament on June 3rd at the Lake Course at Red Hawk Golf and Resort. For more information, go to pezgolf.org. Funds raised go to benefit local children's programs. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are now ready for our debate between Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2 and Douglas County Commissioner Danny Tarkanian. Danny, we're going to start with you. We had a coin toss uh, to decide who's going to sit where and who's going to start. I lost so, them both. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start here, uh, which is in your last appearance on the program, uh, you brought up concerns about two million illegal immigrants coming across the border, and you laid some of that blame at Congressman Amaday's feet. Would you go ahead and lay that out for him? Sure. I think one of the biggest concerns people have in Congressional District 2 is the influx of illegal immigrants. Uh, not only were there two million last year, there were 7,000 each month, each day in this past month. And now if you read in the reports, they're talking about having uh, 200,000 people coming into the country illegally every week. And obviously it isn't just because you encourage people to come across the border uh, and get free citizen, get citizenship, but that's a big cause of it. Mark's uh, uh, voted for numerous times. He's um, been on audio advocating the, uh, why he supports providing citizenship to illegal immigrants. When you encourage people to come across the border, give them the greatest gift you can possibly give, and that's citizenship to the United States, you encourage more people to come to the country. And that's the last thing we need. Okay, you want to do a rebuttal? Well, I, I mean, quite frankly, I, I voted for the Farm Labor Workforce Modernization Act, which was merit-based immigration for farm labor folks. You had to work for nine to 14 years. You had to do background checks. You had to pay a fine. It was supported by the Chamber of Commerce, the Farm Bureau, and the cattlemen. And so quite frankly, part of the reason the things, and Danny's right about the border, the reason things are so messed up at the border is because Congress hasn't done its job leadership on both sides. Yes, when I have an opportunity to exhibit leadership and do it in, in a merit-based way, which I believe is a phrase the president has used, then I'm going to support that. Uh, do you want to do a rebuttal on that? Well, sure. I mean, first of all, with respect to uh, Congress hasn't done its job, Mark's been in Congress for 11 years, and I'm not going to blame Mark for all the f problems that are there, but he's been a part of it. And if he hasn't solved this, any, any of these problems yet, you know, the uh, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, Mark's been in office for 11 years. If you're not happy with what's happened uh, over these past 11 years in Washington, D.C., if you're not happy with the results of illegal immigration, then you've got to be insane to vote for Mark again. Okay, do you want to rebut that? 
Well, I, I think it's uh, not being afraid to be a leader. And so quite frankly, I'm not doing the same thing over and over again, which is why I'm one of the people that stood up and said, this is well thought out. It's a good way to solve the farm labor workforce problem. And it's not amnesty when you got to basically do, do the system for nine to 14 years and come in and go under all the merit-based things. And so quite frankly, if I had it to do over again, I'd do it the same way. Okay, um, let us move on to a question for you, Congressman. Um, the skyrocketing debt is up to $30 trillion, inflation going out of control. I'm using Danny's words here. Um, uh, your thoughts on that? Well, c quite frankly, um, w when you've got Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer running things, um, I voted against all the budget bills that came out of the House with Nancy Pelosi coming in. Now, I voted for the omnibus, quite frankly, because the, the process in getting together with the Senate produced a bill that gave the president less than two-thirds of what he asked for. Also, it was a net 6% increase, Sam. And so quite frankly, when you factor in the bad news of inflation, that is a net cut in how we funded those folks. And so when you sit there and talk about the stuff that was in that in terms of, do you care about Lake Tahoe? That's in Commissioner Tarkanian's county. Do you care about wildland fire? Do you care about increasing the budget for the Border Patrol and Customs? All of those things that were in there, do you care about putting back in the Hyde Amendment? So quite frankly, it's like, listen, these are tough times, but I'm not going to throw all that away in order to basically say you got a, a net cut in spending. Uh, Danny, you want to rebut? Well, sure. Now, Mark said uh, that he's, he's been in office 11 years, and he said he voted against some of these budgets, but he's never voted against the final omnibus bill. He's been in office for 11 years. The debt has gone up $14 trillion, actually $16 trillion since Mark's been in office. It isn't just this past bill that's causing the skyrocket in inflation. It's a reckless, out-of-control spending, and this past bill was one of the worst. So when Mark talks about the things that are good in the bill, well, you know, there was... Uh, 21% pay increase for okay. Mark's... I got, I got to hold you off there because we only got 30, 30 seconds? seconds for rebuttal. Uh, Mark, do you want to jump in? Well, well, let me just put it this way. President Trump signed those bills. And quite frankly, when you talk about what we've done in, in those things, it's, it's been a function of... I shut the government down a couple times, Sam. And you know what changed when we shut the government down? Nothing. So you want to talk about insanity and doing the same thing over and over. You can't shut down Social Security and Veterans Affairs over this stuff. And I, quite frankly, chose not to do it and have been very verbal about that. Okay, so 11 yeah. years, he hasn't voted against any omnibus bill at all. He's, he's voted to increase our debt $16 trillion. And he says that's not the definition of insanity. I would disagree. With respect to this bill that he's talking about that was so good and had a few positive things in it, it had $10 billion in, in pork projects. Mark brought back one-tenth of one percent of that, one-tenth of one percent of that, and he says that's good. You know, uh, uh, Dina Titus brought back four times that. Um, Horsford, Senator, uh, Congressman Horsford brought back three times that. Okay. There was horrible Hold things on. in that bill. Okay. Well, it, I find it interesting when you sit there and talk about all the money we're spending and then you turn around and criticize me for not bringing back more. That's an interesting case of a bipolar complex. Thank you. Well, you know, it's really interesting that uh, Mark's whole uh, theme and, and argument to be reelected is, hey, I've been in Congress the longest and I bring back more pork projects. So when I say how bad those pork projects are and it's causing skyrocket inflation, Mark deflects and says, well, we brought back something good for you in Lake Tahoe. And then he says, oh, well, now you are. And then when I say, well, you don't even bring back one fourth of what these other congressmen have done. And now he says, oh, that's not a good argument. You can't have it both ways. Either, either you're, you, you should, you, you, your argument is to be reelected because of the pork projects and that's bad, or your argument is you're not even bringing back enough pork projects and that's bad. You're okay. bad either way. Congressman? You've misstated what my argument is, but I know you're making it up so that you can basically have the narrative you want. Quite frankly, I've run on the fact that Nevada's the priority and I'll stick with that. Okay, let's take a break. We'll take a breather and we'll be right back. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. 
jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Hi, I'm Renee Summer, our digital news anchor here at 7 at 7. Watch our streaming nonstop newscast immediately with your mobile phone. 7 at 7 is the new way for you to get every bit of local news you need in just seven minutes. Breaking news, local neighborhood news, weather and sports are just a click away. Reporters bring you all of what's happening in the valley from Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube and more. Get every bit of local news you need from the RJ and LVRJ.com. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our debate between Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2 and Douglas County Commissioner Danny Tarkanian. Um, one of the things that Mr. Tarkanian accuses you of is uh, voting to support Planned Parenthood and $500 million for Planned Parenthood. How do you plead? Well, Planned Parenthood funding was in with the Violence Against Women Act, which was in that, which was in that, uh, that omnibus that, that apparently I should have voted no against. Um, and, and quite frankly, all the pro-life organizations w that I've got a 100% score on, by the way, uh, not because we check it, just because we do the right thing, it's like none of them expected you to defund and unauthorize the Violence Against Women Act in order to cut funding from Planned Parenthood. And, and so, I'll just say this, quite frankly, some days in this business it's tough and you have to make decisions. It's a value judgment. There was much more good in that, and quite frankly, nobody in a, in a right to life sense got dinged for voting um, to reauthorize the Violence Against Women Act, which has been around for more than a little while, and, and yeah, I supported that. Okay. So again, Mark's misleading the audience. He's voted for funding for Planned Parenthood for 11 years. Every year he's been in office. Uh, it's not just one bill, and it's not even 500 million. He keeps voting to increase the funding. It was 500 million in 2018. Now we're giving 600 million dollars of your taxpayer money to the organization that, com that commits the most abortions and harvests body parts. Anybody that I talk to that's pro-life thinks it's horrendous that that would happen. Mark? Well, it's interesting because quite frankly, the voters in Nevada said you can have an abortion up to six months. The voters. Not somebody in Congress, not somebody in the legislature. So to frame it as, oh, you get to have this or not, is quite frankly very misleading. And, and so quite frankly, it's like, listen, a lot of women go to the clinic here to get their, uh, their, their well-being services and stuff like that. So it's like, hey, um, you got to make a decision there and not shut the whole thing down, the whole government down and vote no against the Omni, which is apparently a concept that is not fully understood here. Well, well, you've never voted against any, any Omni. You voted for every single one of them. But when he talks about the voters voting for this, he represents CD2. It's a very conservative district. I'll let the voters decide. Do you think that we should give your taxpayer money to fund the organization that commits the most abortions in the United States? Now, the argument that Mark gives is, oh, well, they do other good things, too. Well, why did you give more money to or there's, there's thousands of other organizations that give health care to women that you can give money to that don't commit abortions and don't harvest body parts? Mark? Which is why we fully fund the, uh, the federally qualified health centers in Nevada that are throughout CD2. And by the way, when we talk about the people of CD2 and you want to talk about roots in the district and representing the district for seven years longer than you even were in the district, I'll stand by that record in terms of being in touch with those folks and look forward to how they decide on who they want to represent them for the next 24 months. Yeah, well, when you start talking about um, the, uh, the other health care organizations that get money, they get $600 million less dollars because you're giving that to Planned Parenthood. When you start talking about people that live in the district and how touch you are with them, you know, this is one of the emails I got from somebody when I got in this office said, his name is Gerald Balance. He goes, Mr. Amaday, although affable, has been the least responsive congressman I have ever encountered, and I have lived in 15 other states as part of my naval officers. As opposed to another email from Gail who said, 
I have lived in Douglas County for 24 years and, have, had, and has never has anyone been as concerned about the constituents as the way you have demonstrated that you are. Okay, That's pretty okay. impressive for only being there for a couple of years. Rebuttal. Go ahead. I'm glad you've got two folks that, you, that support you. Yeah. We'll see at the vet ballot box if it's two or how many. We certainly will. Okay, so let's move into another area here. Um, one of the things that uh, you talked about um, was that uh, uh, the amount of pork um, that comes back to Nevada through Congressman Amade, um, and that it was, in your opinion, a minuscule amount by comparison. Um, why don't you elaborate on that? Well, the first thing is I think these budgets are horrible. I, the budgets, are, the, the $16 trillion of bu the debt has gone up since Mark Amade has been in office has caused an incredible uh, amount of uh, inflation, which is excruciating to the everyday Americans. I mean, I was at the... <coughs> I was at the store the other day and I bought milk for my mother and the lady goes, I can't believe it's $4.80. I remember it was 240 and I said, I know, you know, the people that are passing all these things, giving out free uh, goodies to everybody thinking, hey, uh, it's not costing you anything. What's well, costing you now? And it's because of these type of budgets. And, uh, you know, this, this bill, it had, it had uh, uh, $10 billion in pork projects. It had uh, $370 million to reimburse Middle East countries for border security. $500 million provide assistance to, the assistance to the governor of Jordan to support their armed forces. $2.4 billion to promote gender equity internationally. Well, where's that at? $2.9 billion to the Department of Energy for environmental okay. justice. Okay. Uh, Congress don't have enough time to get well, all this well, stuff Well, quite frankly, the world is a dangerous place, and you don't protect your interests by withdrawing. We're seeing what happens with this administration when you withdraw from Ukraine, and they're fighting for their life. And so when I sit here and listen to that sort of stuff, it indicates to me a fundamental lack of understanding of what you have to do to try to be a world power and to protect your interests. And our interests go beyond our borders. And by the way, when you talk about, oh, there's these pork projects, they're less than a quarter of a percent. And don't think, Sam, that the fact that Congress didn't do it, the Obama administration, when we didn't do it, was doing it. So the money's going to get spent. Okay. Okay, so I think that shows how out of touch Congressman uh, Amity is. He's more concerned about the border security in Jordan than he is about the border security here in the United States. In fact, it was just reported today on Fox News um, that the uh, Attorney General in, in Texas says there'll be 20% of all people in the United States are gonna be illegal immigrants when Biden leaves office. So what's more important to the voters uh, in CD2, that we protect the borders of Jordan or that we protect the borders here in the United States? Uh, Congressman? Well, that's interesting since, since basically that omnibus that Mr. Tarkanian hates maintained the Trump fence funding at, at a billion eight. It also gave an increase to Customs and Border Patrol so they can try to tackle the thing that's, that's overwhelming them from the Biden administration and also ICE. So when you say you don't care about the border, it's like, well, that bill that you apparently would have voted against gave them a ton of help and also built a fence, no pun intended, around the, the Trump border wall funding. You know, again, common Congressman Amade is just made, misleading the audience here. The $1.9 billion for the Trump border wall was already out, uh, appropriated. Uh, it was appropriated before. The only thing this bill did was it didn't take out that appropriation. It, it wasn't allocated. It's not allocated to be spent. So it's going to sit there just like it sat there for the last four years. But you know what it does have in there? The bill, this bill that Mark Amade is so proud about, $900 million to fix the dirt around the border fence for environmental purposes instead of uh, putting up more fence. You know what it does do? Not, not the bill, but you know what they're doing now? They're paying $3 million per day not to build a wall. That's where okay. your money's going. Stand by. So the part that he left out was the Democrats wanted to sweep that wall money into their social programs, and we successfully fought to maintain it so it's there. And, and so quite frankly, when you talk about out of touch or misleading, I think there's a quite a bit going on here. All right, let me uh, move on to another topic here. Um, I, I want you to, to explain from your perspective what the difference is between um, potentially you going back to Congress um, and getting a chairmanship uh, on one of the money committees versus being number 435 in terms of seniority in the Congress. Well, qu quite frankly, Sam, it's like anything else. It takes time to build relationships. And when you've been back there for a little while, and, and listen, I'm mindful of, of term limits and stuff like that, even though it doesn't apply here, to say that you've got the ability to then go fr from a position of, of influence for getting what we need for Nevada. And by the way, make no mistake, the priority for this seat is Nevada. It's the only seat of the 435 whose exclusive responsibility is for the original part of the state. That's how we've conducted ourselves for the whole time and would continue to from a position of seniority. And if you think there's going to be a red wave, there's going to be a lot of freshmen in this time 
fighting for attention and stuff like that. And so, quite frankly, I think it's a good time to stay the course. Okay, okay. so Mar Congressman Amadei's response to why he should be reelected, and this has been the same thing he said at all the Leak and Day dinners and everything is, that I've been in office so long that I'll be put on a powerful position and I'll bring back more pork to the state. Now, if the viewers feel that's the reason why you want somebody representing you, then they should vote for him. But if the viewers want somebody who stand up for the conservative principles that all of you care about, then they should vote for me. Now, Mark Amadei has voted to give citizenship to illegal immigrants. And you know, only okay, in the okay. swamp. Uh, hold it up there, because you're at 30 seconds. Uh, Congressman? 94% Trump voting rating. Th that's not not caring about the things that are for conservatives. And also, he's misconstrued the fact that it's not about pork. It's about being able to influence federal executive agency decisions as they affect Nevadans. And you can get their attention when you're in a position of seniority and also perhaps the majority. Okay, so I don't know what Mark's voting record is with, the, uh, uh, with Trump, but I will say he was the first GOP congressman to come out and support President Trump's first impeachment inquiry. He also came out publicly and said President Trump was to blame for January 6th. He's also in favor of giving millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to other countries' border security and border wall when we don't have it here. That's not America first policy. That not, that's not supporting President Trump. Okay, Congressman. Total misconstruing. Donald Trump basically said, I support Mark Amaday in 2020. After I allegedly came out in favor of impeachment, forget the fact that I voted no on both of them, the thing that Mr. Tarkanian keeps referring to, which is so interesting, is this. It's like, hey, everybody agreed after the whistleblower came out about the Ukraine call that they should look into it. The Senate voted for it unanimously, the House did, and oh, by the way, the White House supported it and released the transcript. Tell people the truth, Danny. Well, the truth is that 140, President Trump endorsed 148 congressmen in the year that, uh, that, that Amit Mark's talking about. That's virtually every... A congressman that was running in a safe seat or a contested seat. So that's really not very impressive when you wanted the rest of the 148. But you know what President Trump did do after Mark Amaday became the first GOP congressman to support the impeachment inquiry? He dropped Mark from being his campaign chair in the state of Nevada and instead he appointed somebody who wasn't even elected and to and in addition to other legislators, state legislators here. Okay. Congressman? Quite frankly, I'll tell you how you get endorsed. That's when you vote with the president 94.5% of the time, and you voted with him none of the time because you weren't in office. So Mark Amadei's response is, I've been in office longer, so you should, you should support me. You know what Mark's voting record is with every conservative group? He's got a 58, an F with the Liberty Group of Mark, Mark Levin. He's got a lifetime rating of 60% with Club for Growth, a lifetime rating 60% with Freedom Works, a lifetime rating 61% with the Heritage Action Committee. He's got this past year, he had an, a 68 with the American Conservative Union. Now, if Mark Amadei is supporting the conservative views of, of CD2 uh, voters, now why does he have one of the worst voting records with every single congressman, uh, in it, GOP congressman? Okay, congressman. Quite frankly, East Coast groups are not the ones that elected me to this office. I will continue to vote the way that I think is in the best interest of the folks that elect, gave me the job. And the fact that they don't agree with, with somebody in Indiana that, that runs a group one way or the other is like, fine. We vote with them most of the time. But you know what? I work for the people in Nevada, not some group on the East Coast. And that's where we have to leave. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org.
Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. Don't miss the $200,000 Big Cash giveaways at Tamarack Casino through May 28th. One $10,000 Big Cash winner guaranteed every Saturday, plus over $60,000 in grand prize giveaways. The $200,000 Big Cash giveaways at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're winding up our debate between Congressman Mark Amity of CD2 and Douglas County Commissioner Danny Tarkanian. Danny, you get to go in with the rebuttal. Yeah. Well, before the break, Mark had talked about how these East Coast groups don't represent the conservative views of the people in, in Congressional District 2, and that's just a completely false. Club for Growth is a fiscal conservative group. Freedom Works is a liberty-oriented group. Look, you know what they don't agree with? They don't agree with Mark Amity's position to grant citizenship to illegal immigrants. Only in the swamp do they pass laws that don't work, then they don't enforce them, and then you reward them for breaking those laws. Okay, Congressman? Well, quite frankly, when you're trying to solve problems, you don't have the luxury of pie-in-the-sky stuff. I'll tell you this. The reason that the problem at the border is because Congress has not acted, and so we keep getting executive orders from Barack Obama. We do the, uh, the Trump executive orders, which I happen to like better, and now with Joe Biden with basically no rules. And so if you want somebody with leadership who's willing to stand up and try to solve the problem, then I'd appreciate your support. If, if you don't, and you like the way things are now, it's, it's gonna be an awful next two years, and you need somebody who knows what they're doing to get us through it. Okay, you got 10 seconds. Well, Mark's been there 11 years, and if you're happy with what's happened over the past 11 years, you should vote for him again. If and you wanna change, you need to vote for somebody else. And that's where we have to leave it. Gentlemen, thank you both very much, and we'll be right back. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we practiced again and again. And by blazing new trails in large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker. One of the things I love about the Carson Valley Inn here in beautiful downtown Minden is CB steak. I have eaten here so many times. Tell folks what they can expect when they come here to eat. It's a beautiful room, great service. We have certified Angus beef, seafood, lamb, a great range of appetizers, and wonderful desserts. Jean-Michel's done a great job of selecting some beautiful wines for us. The customers love it, and we've got a great selection of cocktails as well. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culp of Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also check our archive going back to 2005 on our website. Again, nevadanewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.